right, you found it. It's the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video, the evening edition, Wednesday, the 21st of September, a day that will go down in infamy is, well, maybe not, but certainly one of the bigger forecast headaches we've had over the last uh, couple of months. Uh, a high-end severe weather day was on the table for today, but we started to express some concerns last evening on Weather for Weather Geeks on social media as well that... Uh, we had a few things maybe working against a high-end severe weather day today. One of those things being a layer of warm air aloft, kind of a thin, tenuous layer of warm air aloft. To get into a little bit of the meteorology, uh, an elevated mixed layer, EML, something that we dealt with uh, today. That's a, that's a layer of air aloft that moved into the area, moved overhead, that's characterized by being pretty warm and pretty dry compared to the layer below it. That can work towards helping severe weather and thunderstorms get going if air parcels can overcome the initial warm layer at the bottom of that EML and get into that dry air aloft and you can get uh, explosive development sometimes if you can overcome the cap. But the cap was a little too strong for us today and because our front is still several hours to the north and west, we didn't have a good enough trigger in place to overcome that warmer layer aloft. So updrafts hit that layer of warm air and the air parcels just can't keep rising very efficiently. And so you don't get those really tall cumulus, cumulonimbus clouds that get up to 40, 50, 60,000 feet. We did have some showers and storms around, but uh, they were kind of mostly garden variety. When the atmosphere is uncapped, uh, you can get updrafts that just keep on going and start taking advantage of that air aloft that for a while might be a little bit on the warm side, but then eventually the updrafts encounter colder air and those buoyant updrafts can then really rocket upwards. And uh, so the atmosphere can take advantage of that kind of a setup. Today was just one of those, day one of those days though that uh, things were just a little too hard to overcome. Now the radar as of 720 is pretty quiet locally. This loop uh, will take a few seconds to load, but uh, we did have some showers and some storms earlier this afternoon. You see the lightning plot here. Uh, across parts of Trumbull and Mercer counties especially. Well, the lightning doesn't... There we go. See the lightning strikes there. We had a couple of pretty decent thunderstorms for a time, Trumbull and Mercer, mid-afternoon, but they were mostly garden variety. For a little while, we got a little worried that, the, especially in Trumbull County, the uh, kind of the left-hand side or, or northwest side of that uh, particular cell was trying to rotate a little bit, but that concern was pretty fleeting. Uh, for the most part, uh, these storms went through and behaved themselves pretty well. As of 720, showers and storms trying to reemerge down across the I-70 corridor co closer to Columbus. But as you can see, when you look at the dew points, the front is still a ways off. I mean, our cold front is still kind of way back here. It hasn't even gone through Detroit yet. And so until that front clears us later in the evening, we're going to have to allow for the possibility of showers and storms. Now our window for a big severe weather outbreak appears to have closed. Could a couple of these showers and storms later this evening still be a little bit feisty? Yeah, but I don't think it is going to be that big of a deal. Now this is a back-breaking, season back-breaking cold front. Uh, it breaks the back of summer is what I'm trying to say, this cold front coming east. Uh, summer coming to an abrupt halt uh, in many of the uh, the states in the middle of the country, including the Dakotas, Minnesota, frost advisories are out on September the 21st on the eve of autumn near the U.S.-Canadian border. 24-hour temperature drop. Look at that, 39 in Denver, 37 Omaha. I think our 24-hour temperature drop will be kind of similar to Minneapolis. 25, 28 degrees. I think we'll spend a lot of tomorrow afternoon in the upper 50s after reaching 86 this afternoon, probably the last 86 we're going to see for some time. Before we head back home, real quick word on the tropics because Fiona is still a story because it is a powerful hurricane. Category 4, thankfully not impacting many land masses. This has moved uh, northward at 9 miles per hour, putting it within about 600 miles of the tiny island of Bermuda. Pressure down to 937 millibars. It probably maintains Category 4 strength as it goes just west of Bermuda. Here's Bermuda right here. So a close shave for that island. Um, but as we go through time and towards the weekend, this will actually be a bigger deal, I think, for eastern Canada, Nova Scotia. Now, it'll be post-tropical at this point, but this will still be a powerful low that impacts uh, Halifax and other parts of far eastern Canada, Atlantic Canada, if you will. Um, this will be a pretty big-ticket item, even though it'll be post-tropical. 
at that point. Now, with our front finally moving through late this evening and into the overnight, our rain chances will increase. Our severe weather chances, probably not that high. But a couple of showers and storms starting around 10 or 11, maybe taking us through 1 o'clock or so, that window for thunderstorms. The rest of the night, probably just some garden variety showers here and there as the colder air plows in and big, big changes starting tomorrow. As of this recording, the SPC, Storm Prediction Center, still has this outlook in uh, the slight risk, two on that one to five scale for severe weather. But I think with their final update of the evening, which may come in the eight o'clock hour, they'll probably drop the slight risk from Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Western New York. All right, so we close the book then on thunderstorms and severe weather and summer-like weather. And well, appropriately enough, autumn arrives tomorrow evening, about nine o'clock in the evening. Showers here and there as we get into the afternoon. It'll be raw. I mean, the breeze will be noticeable when it's raining, especially. It's going to kind of feel like early November. Uh, tomorrow afternoon into early tomorrow evening. High pressure builds in. Give us a better looking day on Friday. We'll be dry for high school football. Bundle up, though. Clouds will increase for a time, then Friday night. And then we'll call it partly sunny for Saturday. Our high school football forecast for Friday. Another dry evening. That's similar to our previous Friday evenings. What's different, though, of course, the temperatures. We've had kickoff temperatures in the upper 70s. Most of our Fridays so far this season, but 53 uh, Friday evening at 7 p.m., followed by 47 as you head to your car after the game. So definitely hoodie and hot chocolate weather Friday evening. This is a pretty chilly forecast for the next seven days. The weekend starts out dry, 66 Saturday, then some shower Sunday. This is with our next system that brings in a fresh batch of cool air, at least 10 degrees, cooler than average during the first half of next week. So this pattern has a little bit of staying power. As I mentioned last evening on Weather for Weather Geeks, I do think that it stays pretty cool into the first couple of days of October. Later in that first week of October, it seems pretty likely that some warmer air will try to push in from the west. We'll keep you up to date all evening on social media and the Storm Tracker 21 app as showers and storms try to push in. Again, severe weather chances appear to be decreasing. We like that. And uh, we'll have a full recap of today's activities and another uh, look at the upcoming weekend and beyond on 21 News at 11. No weather geeks tomorrow and Friday. I've got a couple of days off. I'll see you back here on Monday.